start out by saying that I do think this movie is a pretty good movie. Uh, the Infiltrator, but like all, you know, kind of cop movies where you're, you know, infiltrating yourself into the mob or whatever, it always comes down to the cast. And this has a pretty incredible cast with, you know, Brian Cranston. And as many people have commented, he had the perfect training to do this job playing Eisenberg on Breaking Bad. Right. But, you know, John Leguizamo. Leg- Leg- uh, thank you. I can never pronounce his name correctly. I am Marcus's name whisperer. Exactly. Uh, probably, you know, had all the best lines in the movies. Uh, he's great in everything he does. Um, I don't think this this is an absolutely fantastic movie. Uh, I think they tried to cram a lot into two hours, and this would have been better if it would have been like a two and a half, three hour movie, or maybe a series, like a mini series. Yeah. But it's entertaining and enough to go back to the theater, uh, you know, or I would definitely watch it more than once. I would pay to see it, and I didn't this time, so I would actually pay to see it. So, <laughs> right. you know, that, that that's a, for me, that's a lot, because right. I got hard earned money and. I don't like spending a lot of money on movies, so if I actually pay to see it, that's the Smitty stamp of approval right there. Right. Now, is this Donnie Brasco? No. And, you know, again, that's another... I use it as an example of perfect casting with Johnny Depp and Al Pacino and Michael Madsen and all that. Just like, you know, the heist movies, the Ocean Eleven movies, where you have this great, fantastic ensemble cast that works really well with one another. So, everything... You know, from that from that standpoint, work. I would like to say Benjamin Bratt was particularly good in the movie. He is. But I think it's time that we quit typecasting Benjamin Bratt as an older actor, as some Colombian drug lord, because he did the same thing in that Dwayne Johnson movie uh, where he was smuggling drugs to get his son out of prison. You know, it's... I'd like to see Benjamin Bratt go back to the nerdy cop guy from, you know, Demolition Man. Well, if going a little bit further back, he was also the Special Forces team leader in Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford. Well, that, um, he was also uh, the Lieutenant Colonel in The Great Raid. Can we have Benjamin Brad play a good guy? You know what? He was pretty good on that little, you know, that little show that most people don't realize he was in, you know, Law and Order. Yeah, he was pretty good on that, yeah. Now, there is one scene that I absolutely take issue with. If you're an undercover guy and you have an undercover wife, your undercover wife is not going to go to your real life house, meet the wife, to pick up the tuxedo that you wore on your own real wedding day. (coughs) If you're undercover, they're going to supply that. Now, I understand the need to have this scene where the fake wife meets the real wife and to have the whole conversation, usually even with my husband, and then, you know, the (coughs) fake wife tells the real wife everything that she's learned and you're a lucky man. That's fine. It's a great scene. It was a great conversation. But you've dropped... Maybe this is me as the storyteller. You've dropped the ball on the reason she's there. Well, that... And, yeah, look, um, I, I do think John Lee was almost character had it right in the scene where the drug dealers provide a stripper for him right. and she'll do anything. A, a real undercover in that, in that situation when he's being watched, he's going to do it. Exactly. Because it's either that or die. Exactly. You know, and a seasoned undercover like Brian Cranston's character would have done it. And I bet you in the real life story, he did. But that right. wouldn't play well to movie audiences. No. And you have to have a reason for the fake wife and the real wife to meet each other. Then you have right. to drum up a reason to have the fake wife in the first place so you can bring yeah. in your female lead. And nothing against Diane Kruger. I mean, she's a wonderful actress. I've enjoyed her and pretty much everything that she's done. And, and she, she did a good job. Yeah, and she still looks good now that she's, you know, pushing 40. But, you know... Considering again, she played a character in her early 20s convincingly, I would agree right. with that. Now, there's another thing that makes this movie fantastic. The soundtrack. Uh, they, thank you for bringing that up. They hit all the right notes on yeah. the songs. I mean, you had 70s R&B, especially dropping the Pusher Man song. I mean, that one, you had electronic music, you had great dance music. I mean... You had rock, you had Rush. Exactly. You know, it it was just... Even though it's the worst Rush song ever, in my mind, it was perfectly placed and timed. See, and that's where you're wrong, because there is no bad Rush song. (laughs) Maybe that's true, I just can't stand the Tom Sawyer song. I mean... 
you know. Well, that's through overplaying. That's the same reason why I don't like You Shook Me All Night Long by ACDC, because they play <laughs> right. that one all the time. Right. So, if I had to rate this movie based on our grading skill, I would give this movie an 8 out of 10. And this is the f- maybe the first time ever Marcus and I have agreed. I give it an 8 out of 10. <laughs> Can't say it's absolutely fantastic, and you know our reasons why, but an 8 is a good enough movie to, to pay and, and go watch in the movie theaters, and you're definitely going to watch it more than once. It's enjoyable. It has just enough funny notes to break the tension from the serious scenes, and... You know, exactly. like I said, I'd pay to see it. So and you know that's what? the best compliment I can give a movie. You know that somewhere down the line, AMC is going to be doing a double feature of The Infiltrator and Donnie Brasco, and you're going to have a great Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm. And there you go. That's and you our- can also you can also watch it in about a year and a half. You can also watch it and then Netflix the entire first season of Mar- Narcos. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, go see Infiltrator.